Friends, welcome to the homestead. What can you do to help build your soil health and fertility over the winter months? Well, today we're gonna to talk about three things that we do and one that I think is the absolute best and why. Let's talk about it. So it is important to keep your soil covered at all times. And during the winter, if you live in a very snowy climate or a very cold climate, it's kind of hard to do that with plants that you're going to eat out of your garden. Now there are some that you can grow, but not many. And most people aren't growing those. So you need to cover your soil and protect it in the winter time. Obviously down here in zone 8B in Texas, we can plant a lot in the winter time and have it grow throughout the entire winter. That doesn't work for everyone. Now you can't say that you never see bare soil in nature because you do. And this is an example of one. This is what happens when you have bare soil for too long of a period of time. Things obviously can dry out when you don't have enough organic matter in the soil. And obviously erosion takes away all of the good nutrients from that soil. Nature isn't intended to work like that and it was not designed like that. So when you are planting and gardening, you always want to keep the soil covered with something. And the first thing we cover our soil with is this. And that's a living cover crop. In this mix, there are several different things. Hairy vetch, field pea, winter rye, and oats. The first three will help fix nitrogen into the soil. It's a process by where specific plants, usually legumes, take nitrogen out of the air and fix it in their roots. Once you kill off this cover crop, that nitrogen will stay in the soil. But if you decide to just trample the cover crop and plant next to it, that nitrogen on the root nodules will benefit all the other plants that you plant next to it. Additionally, in this mix, the oats have a very deep root system and a very wide root system. And what that root system will do is open up the soil. It'll break the soil down and it will allow air and water to get deeper down into the soil. Now you may kill off those cover crops in several different ways. One is just by trampling them over, like I mentioned. You can also cut them with a lawnmower or you can tarp over them and kill them with some sort of cover. <clears throat> Once your cover crops are killed off, that organic matter will only add benefit to the soil. If you decide to use a plastic silage tarp like we do sometimes, that does offer some benefits of holding moisture in the soil, the light deprivation from it does kill off the crop very quickly, and it is very warm under there. So it does invite a lot more insects that will break down that organic matter in the form of those plants a lot quicker. So the second way are dried dead leaves, and I'll explain why this is our favorite way. So there are actually two ways to do your leaves, and that is this first one. These leaves here are not broken down very much. They are not fresh off the tree, but they are still fairly whole. And when I put them on my bed, they will protect the soil. These leaves not only protect the soil, they are going to provide food for your earthworms in the winter. They're going to insulate the soil, they're going to hold moisture on the soil, and they're going to provide a good humic soil conditioner or humus. And what that does for the soil is really help with nutrient retention and water retention, and it also helps aerate the soil. So the more humus you have in your soil, the better it's gonna be, the less compacted it's going to get. And that really helps young seedlings and their root systems get established because if they're trying to grow into a really hard, dense soil, they're not going to do very well. Additionally, what this is doing is providing food for earthworms and arthropods like millipedes. And we all know that worm castings or worm poop is amazing for your soil. It really rejuvenates your soil incredibly well. But there's one really important part about leaves on your garden beds. And that is, if you've got a difficult challenge with an imbalance of nutrients in your soil, the leaves are not going to add a lot of nutrients into that soil. Recently, if you didn't see it, you can click on the video at the top of the screen and see our video about how we've been killing our garden over the last seven years with salty well water. And what that salty well water has done has thrown everything 
in terms of nutrients out of balance in all of our garden space. So adding these leaves is a great soil amendment, but it is not a fertilizer, which is important for us. Before I talk about the other aspect of leaves, I wanna show you what can happen if you do a silage tarp, at least down here in Texas, and probably most places in the South, and that is ants. This entire space here has been completely run over with ants. Those ants love the warm space below that silage tarp. It really attracts them to this area. And that can be a real challenge if they're fire ants. Luckily, I think these are mostly black ants, but I'm not gonna stick my hand in there and find out. Now, additionally, with the leaves, that can happen as well. Let me also mention that if you put fresh dead leaves on your garden beds, they can be taken away really easily by the wind. So there are really two things you can do about that. One is to kind of water them down every day so they, they kind of stick together and they compact down fairly quickly so that the wind doesn't take them as easily. But the other really simple method is to cover it with either some insect netting or a row cover like this. And this will allow rain and moisture to get down in there and start to break them down quickly. And it will hold them down so you don't have to be out here every single day checking to see if your leaves have blown away off your garden beds. For us, we don't usually put fresh leaves on the garden. However, we do make what's called leaf mold. Look at this beautiful stuff here. This has been sitting here for about a, a year and down inside, it is almost what looks to be soil. But look at that black gold, that is beautiful and it is really amazing for your garden, for your soil. It holds a ton of moisture. As you can see, look at that, I could almost just squeeze out water. It is perfect and you cannot get much better than this. And like I said, the beautiful thing about this is if you have a garden that is out of balance with other nutrients, say it's iron or manganese or calcium or whatever it is, this is not going to disturb it that much. What it is, is going to amend and help that soil. It's not going to unbalance those nutrients. Now next to it over here, we have our compost pile. This has greens and browns in it, carbons and nitrogens. This contains all of our table scraps. It's got manure from the chicken coop. It's got some leaves in it. It is layered <laughs> and I continually work on it. But this right now for my garden, I cannot use. And the reason for that is that imbalance. I have a very specific plan from my soil scientist to rejuvenate my garden and get the minerals back in balance, get that soil back in balance in the garden. So I can't add this right now. This is perfect for our future though. And that's the third way that I wanted to mention that you can cover your soil in the wintertime and that is to cover it with a layer of compost about an inch deep. But again, be very careful with adding composts and manures to your garden if your garden soil is out of balance like ours is. Because depending on what you regularly add to that compost pile, it could be high in nitrogen, it could be high in phosphorus, potassium, whatever. And it's gonna be a real challenge to get that garden of yours back in balance. But you're almost always safe just adding the leaves. So the nice thing about protecting your soil in the wintertime is that you can do it extremely cheaply. You can do it for free if you have a lot of leaves. Now I know my friends in Arizona don't have access to that, so they have to try to use other methods. The cover crops do cost a little bit of money, but they are relatively cheap. The plastic you are going to be able to use for a few years, so you can amortize that cost over five years or so, however long the plastic holds up. And I do have some very thick 10 mil uh, silage tarp that I use to cover everything, and that will last me a very long time. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is planning. Making your own leaf mold, collecting the uh, materials on your property, making your own compost takes a long time, and you need to plan ahead to have enough of it for your garden. So we've got some fresh leaves right now that I am putting on the bed, but the rest of them will go into this pile to continue to make more leaf mold. I'll divide it up. One half will be used this coming spring and the other half will continue to break down for use next year. 
make sure you give yourself a very large space to be able to make your compost because you're going to want to do it in different stages. Now, yes, there are some methods out there where you can do a very quick compost, like an 18 day or something like that, but be careful with those. They can be very hot in terms of their nitrogen content. And in terms of your compost, you're always going to want different types for different situations. So keep that in mind too. All right, friends, it's back to the garden for me because even at this time of year, it is very important to be working in your garden. Now go check out this video right here, which is our original video on how we built our Back to Eden garden beds in this garden. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.